Hello, this is Mike at for Scratch, and welcome to the next episode in the ongoing Game Dev Toolbox series. Now, this is a look at the essential tools for game developers, be it uh, programmers, artists, musicians, you name it. So all facets of game development are talked about here. And today we're not even talking about a program, as you'll see in a moment. Well, it splits, the, it splits hairs on that one. But we're looking at something called BFXR, or possibly BFXR.net, because technically this is a website. And that means zero installation. All you do is go to www.bfxr.net in your browser and you are good to go. Now this is based off of an old, um, I believe it was a flash based program called SFXR, which was created for Ludum Dare like years ago. And it's a quick sound generator and it's very streamlined, very focused. And if you're looking at making 8-bitish sounds for your game. This is about the easiest way you're going to find. Now, if you prefer, there's actually, I believe it's oh, right there. Uh, so you see, you can actually go ahead and download a local version, uh, Windows or Mac. I believe that's just in the Adobe Air container. So you're getting pretty much the same thing you're getting at the website. But if you prefer to run it as an application, you can. And this guy is about as straightforward as they get. So this is going to be a pretty quick video. And I also have to warn you right up front, I'm going to probably blow your eardrums out. Um, this creates somewhat random sounds. I could create complete crap. It takes some experimentation. And again, I'm not an audio guy. So a lot of these settings, I don't particularly know or understand. So uh, if I create some ear shattering sounds today, I do apologize. Uh, now let me just zoom this guy up a bit and see exactly what we're dealing with. There's not a lot to this. It's quite simple. Uh, you come in here and you basically, there's a bunch of now we'll call them generators, like waveform generators that create a bass sound effect for us. So say we wanted the pickup coin sound or a laser shooting or an explosion sound, power up sound. So, you know, the typical sounds you get from, you know, 8-bit, eight, eight 16-bit style shooters or platformer games, they've got a bunch of them built in. So if we wanted to have a jump sound for our character, we could come in here and just hit jump. You'll see it just added jump and it automatically played it. So we can click it again and it'll automatically replay. You see the waveform that's generated over here? And that's how easy it is to create the jump. Now, if you don't particularly like the result, or, or we can do here and say jump up sound, we name it easily enough, and that's all that's involved. Now, with that particular sound created, we could go ahead and change some things on it. For example, let's say um, the fall off, where's the like decay time? So it's gonna last longer. And there you can immediately hear the result. Now, if we want to go ahead and create, uh, here, let's do a pair. We'll do a laser shooting. That's a terrible one, we'll do it again. don't really like any of these, but oh, you know, change the waveform there. So laser shoot, All right, that's a bit better. So you see the different uh, waveforms or algorithms up here and then the different parameters that are involved here. So now we have this laser shooting sound. And I want to sustain it a little bit longer. And you hear the results of what you change immediately. And we want it to decay a little more. We can up the frequency or down the frequency. And you can see the results on the waveform there. We can also use a different algorithm for calculating the waveform. So there, maybe that's the sound we want. So we can add some harmonics. And it's a matter of mostly playing around until you get the actual sets that you actually want going on. I'm gonna turn that back off, it actually sounds worse. There, so there's our laser shooting sound. Kind of awful, but you know, it works for our particular intentions here. And that is what you do. This is how you actually create your sound. So we've got a laser shooting sound. We're gonna create an explosion as well. So there, there's our explosion. Uh, we'll not make that last a little bit. Right, it's kind of a terrible explosion, but now we have our laser shooting sound and our explosion sound. And now we go over here to the mixer. What we're gonna do is just basically come up here there's our laser shooting. You see how long it lasts right there. And then we can just go ahead and add our explosion. Now we can move this slightly down the timeline. So what happens is the laser. And that's because I've screwed around with the value. So there's the overall time of it. We can change that back over here. One of these values set that. Uh, probably that guy's doing that. No, that's not. Anyways, we've got our two sounds. So we've got our laser shooting. And we've got our explosion going. We'll go ahead and change there you see the one plays after the other and then when you're done so if you want to do a mix of a laser and a shot we've done it we've created this mix now i can just come up here and go export wave uh I'll call it youtube youtube demo that wave and there's the wave file save to my desktop uh where is youtube wave uh, there no oh there it is 
and there's the sound effect we generated. And that's it. It's it's a very clean, streamlined, simple. Uh, you know, you got things here. You can um, undo your sounds. You can have it not create a new sound every time you click this. So if I want to an explosion, I could have it I'll get out of the mixer. Uh, that not create new, and I can say randomize. I go back and have it create a break. And you'll see here every time it's giving us just random sets. So that maybe that we like that explosion sound. So that's what your create new sound toggle is going to be. And the only other thing that you notice here is as I'm hovering over things, we're seeing what the effect of each particular, and there's a, apparently some not safe for work tool tips in here, uh, but you can kind of see what each particular thing does. So there's the bass note of the sound. So if we want more bass, or less bass, or sorry, more bass is lower. So you can kind of get an idea of what each particular thing does by going um, over the tooltip. Now, pitch jump uh, amount one, jump in pitch either up or down. So, you know, it says. And you can play with it until you get exactly what you want. You can even um, save to disk your current results. Or as you saw, we can export the wave out and we're done. And that is it. It is the very, very quick, simple, fast way to create old school 8-bit, 16-bit style sound effects very, very easily. And you could, you know what, if you don't want to know anything about any of this, you could probably come in here, let's say I want a good jump noise, pick jump, All right, let's create a new one, okay, jump. and then I can just sit here and play with it until I like the result, or I can just keep hitting jump until it randomly creates one I actually like the sound of. So you don't even really need to be that knowledgeable of what's going on here. You just need to be very persistent until you get what you want. Uh, so a very streamlined, simple, straightforward tool. It's a waveform generator. Uh, it's got a simple mixer built in there. You've got a lot of controls over the algorithms, you know, creating said waveform. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's what a sound effect is. It's just a waveform saved um, as data. And this is a great way to generate for them, generate them for you. And you can also come out of this, export your wave file out, uh, bring it into something like Audacity and um, you know run a filter through it, add an echo to it, uh, increase the bass or the punchiness or run it through an equalizer or whatever you want to do. This is creating the raw effect. And those other tools are more for post-processing. So they work really well together, but this is a great starting point. Uh, completely straightforward, very simple. And um, as you can see from the site, it's actually uh, open source. The source is available over on GitHub um, and it's completely free. So uh, I hope you found that useful. See y'all later. Bye.